shuffle. The whole RV is shaking. Right. So if the RV's rocking, don't come a knocking. Shh. Don't give that away. <laughs> if you're going to live full time in an RV, make sure it's with somebody you love very, very much. Well, look who's back. Huh, I'm back. <laughs> you needed a break from the RV? Uh, well, you know, it was nice to go visit uh, my mom <laughs> and family in Charleston, South Carolina, and be in a sticks and bricks for a few weeks, actually. We had some girl time. It was a lot of fun. That's awesome. Yeah. And, yeah, we had a few viewers comment uh, wondering, where is Cherie? I'm back. <laughs> so now you know. Not only am I back, but I'm back in the Keys. <laughs> <laughs> yes. In the beautiful Florida Keys here for just a little while. Yeah. So I think so. every time we record, it's just going to be in a bathing suit and a cover-up because <laughs> that's all I'm going to do. There you Beach go. Beach hair, don't care. <laughs> so what did you miss about uh, Sticks and Bricks? Well, I mean, it was interesting because I came back and it was like reacquainting myself with a small space because three weeks is quite some time to be out of the RV. And so it really did spur on some conversation that it was like, oh, you know, even like when I was there. I was like, they have this cool box thing that you put dishes into, and magically they come out clean. <laughs> what is this magical device they call you're talking it a dishwasher. about? Oh my gosh! <laughs> and it's huge compared to one you might find for an RV. So we came up with 16. You can count them. Six, 16. 16. How many? Wait. Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, <laughs> things that uh, mostly you, but I guess combined, we both miss about sticks and bricks. Yeah. For those of you that have not started full-time RVing yet and are wondering what the adjustment will be like, maybe you'll learn something from this or laugh about yeah. some of this. I'm Tom. And I'm Cherie. And this is EnjoyTheJourney.life. And while Cherie was gone, I actually did some repairs that were needed to the RV and did a little bit of solo boondocking. Yeah, you did. I didn't miss that. <laughs> <laughs> and if you are new to our channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. That way you get notified when a new video comes out. Yeah. So what's the first thing you miss? Well, the first thing I was like loving is the long hot shower non-stop hot water that is nice yeah. and uh, we definitely don't have that in the RV no it's pretty limited I feel like uh, I have to decide what I'm going to do in the shower that day because I don't have time for all of it so I wash my hair or I might do shaving so yeah it's right. nice to do it all in one shower and it stay hot <laughs> I do miss that as well, and sometimes I use the bathhouse uh, at RV parks or campgrounds, and that gives me a little bit more shower time. And I think some RVs have the always hot, hot water heaters, yep. and that's just an upgrade that we don't have. On the wish list. Yes, it is. Somewhere. Yes. With all the other things. All the other things. <laughs> So what's the next thing that you miss? Uh, I miss cooking in a regular kitchen. Uh, yeah, I enjoy cooking. And in the RV, I just don't enjoy it as much. We eat much more simple. It's small space. So and Cherie is a great cook, by uh, the way. Thank you. <laughs> we do eat in most of the time, but we do keep it very simple. But when I get into my mom's yeah. kitchen, it's like, I'm ready to cook. You know, it's like you break out everything. There's counter space galore. You there's space to store different kinds of small appliances so everything's at your disposal and it's just a lot easier right and if you'd like to take a look at our rv kitchen or the whole rv you can check out our rv tour we'll put a link in the description and the our rv kitchen is actually pretty big it for is. an rv it is and there is a lot of counter space for an RV, but it still doesn't compare to. When you're laying out for like a big uh, prepared meal, yeah. you would like more space. Yeah. Now I know one thing that you miss is a big bathtub. Oh yeah, that was one of the first things I did. I went and bought some bath salts, some lavender bath salts, and had a nice bath with some candles. I had my diffuser going, I had my glass of wine. It was 
awesome. Nice. Wish I was there for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I read some of my book. Yeah, it was just, it was so nice. Will your mom's bathtub fit too? No. Oh. <laughs> Darn it. We need an RV bathtub with it too. <laughs> wow, now that would be big, like a hot tub in an RV? Yeah, that's the idea. There we go. You know, I think I've seen a YouTube video with that. Yeah. We'll have to put that on the wish list. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They should at least make it long enough to sit in. <laughs> right? Yeah, tubs and RVs, you don't see too many, or they're very, very small. So earlier you mentioned this magical device. Yeah, what was that, that you're like talking about? It's like this magical box that is, uh, it has a residence in the kitchen, and you put dirty dishes in it, and then you turn it on and, like, it the dishes come out clean. It's like magic. That is magic. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get one of those. Yeah, I know they do have some dishwashers for RVs, but they're really small. And this thing is huge, and it's, you miss having stuff like that. <laughs> a, a dishwasher. A dishwasher. That's a real big convenience, and we do spend quite a bit of time hand washing, hand washing dishes. And they also sit out to dry, so we have to have a dedicated space where you have your dishes, and I cook a lot, so we have pots and pans and bowls, and it's just it's a constant rotation, and so there's always dishes sitting out drying, and so it's not my favorite. So when I visit and use the dishwasher, I was like, ah, oh, this is so nice. Cool. <laughs> And some Class A's have the dishwashers as well. Were those pretty good size that we saw? Or are those They're small? okay. I'd like to use it just for a space to like dry the dishes. Because like I told Tom, I said, before you put dishes in a dishwasher, you have to like rinse everything off anyway. So you spend that time pretty much washing the dishes. And then with my mom's, <laughs> it didn't really come out dry. So, <laughs> so yeah, I think that uh, a dishwasher would be a great upgrade. This next one is kind of a funny one because Cherie forgets that we don't have this. Yeah. You'll throw your food scraps into the sink. Yeah, it's a, it's a lifetime habit, actually. It's something I've always had. I've never not had a disposal. So it is. It's a lot of uh, new habit forming and learning the ways of the RV life. Yeah, so I'll sometimes be cleaning out the extra stuff that Shree has put in there. Sorry. And, uh, <laughs> you don't want that stuff going in your gray tank. That doesn't uh, no, work out too well. No, we do well. have a trap, so that's the trap that saves me. <laughs> <laughs> right, so uh, if they could figure out a way to make that work, you know, in an RV, but I just, I just don't know how that would work. Yeah. So if you've ever heard of that in an RV, let us know oh, in the man, comments that be because awesome. <laughs> that is not an option that no. we have seen yet. No. Yeah. So sometimes, like when we get up to make coffee, you actually have to like, you know, run some water in the, we use a French press and all the coffee grounds are in there. You can't just rinse it out and throw it in the sink. You have to actually clean it out with like a paper towel and dump it in the garbage. All plates, everything have to be scraped and put in the garbage in case you've never not had a disposal. That's what it's like. And it's so convenient for that kind of stuff. Just yeah, to just to go into the sink. Worry about when that. you're rinsing stuff out. Yeah. And by the way, if you're wondering, we're not staying at a Cracker Barrel or a Walmart <laughs> right now. Yeah, that's not our typical where we stay. We just like to help you guys out. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a Walmart around the corner nope. over here, anything like nope. that. So. <laughs> and this has got to be one of the best. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Can we talk about the big refrigerator? I mean, we have a good size refrigerator. We do. For an RV, it's pretty but good sized. Since we cook a lot, again, it's not big enough for us. Plus, I make kombucha, and when we bottle, it's two and a half gallons in bottles, and we need the space for that. Right. So, yeah, I do miss having a huge refrigerator. Now, some RVs do have a, a full size they do. refrigerator. Yep. Some big fifth wheels like ours in some of the newer years and some Class A's. Yeah. Oh, oh I love you. <laughs> oh. 
Yeah, I got the ice maker and the water on the outside and a Maytag. And that's cool. I don't know how that works with the whole propane thing, if they will also operate on propane. Right, yeah, like ours does. Because ours will operate on propane. Right, so when we're traveling down the road, it keeps everything cool. Yeah, and it does struggle though. Ours does yeah, struggle does. to keep everything cool. And, and, I, and, and I hear that is an issue with a lot of RV refrigerators. Uh, and maybe those with bigger ones don't have that. Let us know what yeah. your experience is. <laughs> You know, I don't know if we mentioned yet, like, uh, hello, Beach Tribe. Hello, Beach Tribe. Here we are. Yeah. <laughs> Cherie is in her element now. That's all right. And he's never going to drag me away. <laughs> Can you, we live here? <laughs> if you haven't sounded off yet, what are you? Beach, Beach tribe? tribe? Or Mountain Tribe, like me? But I do love the beach. Yeah, you can see those down there somewhere below the YouTube scroll. Yep. If you want one of the official Mountain Tribe or Beach Tribe t-shirts. Yeah, well, when we had the competition, Beach Tribe won, by the way. Yes. <laughs> For those of you that don't know. <laughs> Just by a little bit. Yes. <laughs> but then they still keep getting ordered, so. <laughs> That's my tribe. <laughs> and thank you so much for using our links below. That does help support the channel. We yes. got links to our favorite uh, campsite finders down there and the stuff that we use, our camera gear and all that good stuff. So check that out below. Solid floor. Solid floor. Let's talk about that solid floor. Yeah, this, this is a big one, <laughs> right? Yeah, this is a big one. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't been in an RV yet, if you're just thinking about it, when you shop around, definitely check out how much the floor moves. No, it's not an earthquake. You actually do move around a little bit depending on the RV that you get. Right. Now, there's some people that have like a tripod system that helps stabilize. Um, we don't have that. Or a six-way leveling system adds some right. more support. There is some aftermarket products that gives some more stability. And if you've got some links for those, you can put them in the comments below if you found one that works. Works good, Because, yep. yeah, we'd like to try something out. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's rock -a -bye baby when I'm in bed and he's walking around. It's like... <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of movement and... It's not terrible, but it's it's noticeable. And when you get the washing machine going on a spin <laughs> cycle, <laughs> the whole RV is shaking. Right, so if the RV's rocking, don't come a-knocking, because we're doing laundry. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're going to help fold clothes, then you, <laughs> then can, you knock. can come knock. <laughs> you know, that's a bonus thing we could throw in there, that the washing washer and dryer although that is incredible to have in the rv and very few rvs have them they are small yes they are small but they're they would also be on the top of my list if you're getting an rv and you're wondering should we do the washer and dryer or use that space for closet washer and dryer yeah. yes because some people have to spend a lot of time going to laundromats and that's just not my thing i can right. get People say, well, it takes a long time to wash and dry in these small washer and dryers, but I get a lot of stuff done while I'm waiting on it. So multitasking, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you can do other things. Yeah. And what might take you maybe three loads in the RV can take you one at a laundromat, but you do think your travel time to go there, and plus that change, five, 10, 20 bucks a time. Right, and finding a decent one. We've been in some pretty rough, <laughs> seedy uh, laundromats. Right, yeah. <laughs> when we were boondocking. Yeah, so. you can check out our 30-day uh, challenge <laughs> for uh, that video. Ugh, or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> Ooh, you have nightmares about I boondocking? Do. I like, do, Ooh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what else do you miss? Space? <laughs> I think that's an easy one. Yeah, it really is. And our RV is really the size of a small apartment, yep. which is a lot of space for some people. But if you're used to a fairly large house, yeah. it's quite... A difference yeah but I do like living minimally we don't need as much stuff as a lot of people like to have but um, yeah just finding a place for stuff moving around that just even walking around the bed is 
can be a little bit of a challenge and a little bit more space would be nice but I mean we're in almost 400 square feet so I guess uh, it, it works for us if we're both trying to make uh, like a lunch or something and scooting around each other yeah we do like the RV shuffle yeah right that's what I call the RV shuffle <laughs> <laughs> the shimmy around each other yeah <laughs> Excuse me, he said. I need a piece of bread. That's when we do the RV shuffle. Excuse me, she said. I need to go to bed. That's, That's when we do the RV shuffle. Excuse me, Cherie. I need to go pee. That's when we do the RV shuffle. The RV shuffle. The RV shuffle. The RV shuffle. <laughs> And kind of along with the space is privacy. Right. There's not a lot of privacy in the RV. No, if you're going to live full time in an RV, make sure it's with somebody you love very, very much. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to get to know them very, very, very well. Very intimately. <laughs> You think you know them intimately now? <laughs> Wait till you live in an RV. <laughs> yeah, that uh, is something that for some people, I guess, takes some getting used to. Yep, there's adjustments with that for sure. Yeah. Now we even have like a curtain in the RV yep. to create a little bit of space. So, so I feel like we have our own like separate space. So yeah. yeah, where I can do my yoga and I can work separately from where Tom's working. And so it, it works out really nicely. One thing I miss about living in a sticks and bricks is having a garden, not really a yard. I'm not much of a yard person mowing, bushes, weed yeah, whack and all I that, that all that time wasting stuff where I have better things to do with my time like live really live life uh, I do miss having a garden where you can grow your own food you know where your food comes from we did try to grow some herbs some mint and basil in the RV and it was it was a nice effort but we went through it so fast it was like it just didn't work for us so yeah that goes with the space thing and then the no yard but um, that's all right we'll just buy it <laughs> we have heard of some people that do actually grow things in their RV or I think and even on the roof of their RV yeah they there's ways to do it but I'm planters. not I'm not that motivated to figure it out so what else do you miss yeah, so you know I really like the feel of a solid home you know they use solid materials you know just good quality materials you can't really have that in an RV they do make some but have really good quality Yeah, the class A's put some really maybe some marble in there on the countertops and yeah, but we it don't still have needs that to stay as lightweight as possible because you're right. traveling in it and you're paying for the gas to haul that thing so, so you want it to be lightweight thinner lighter wood used in the construction and it you know it just doesn't hold together thinner walls <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't hold together like a typical house i mean just look at what happens to a house in a hurricane compared to an rv right <laughs> good point <laughs> yeah you'd rather be in a house yes for sure so what's another thing that you miss well, I think a big one for the business is having a hardline internet, like a cable internet service with yes. really great uh, speed. I agree. Because yeah. we struggle with we internet really and do. data. And obviously we need it on a consistent basis. Right. And we don't have that. Yeah, uploading large YouTube videos uh, every week. It takes hours and hours Hopefully sometimes. we can get it done overnight. Hopefully it's done by the morning. But sometimes it's not. And sometimes we have to start over. <laughs> and sometimes it's so bad it's hard to even check email. Yeah. So that would be nice to have consistent, good, strong Wi-Fi right and we are just uh, basically using a hotspot through our cell service provider which is AT&T currently right now that was which... a struggle out west yeah yeah AT&T is not the one of choice for if you're going to be a, spending a lot of time out west it seems like Verizon is the best it's, one it's better for and I know there's some cheaper plans that other people have suggested uh, but we do have an unlimited internet plan and we we burn through a lot of what we have. Yeah. We do use it, a lot of <laughs> a it. A lot, yeah. What else do you miss about not being in a sticks and bricks? 
Well, we don't watch a lot of TV no, or inter don't. traditional entertainment, but we know for some people that's a big deal. We don't know what we're going to have. I mean, we have a portable satellite, but I don't use it yeah. anymore. And you need line of sight. If, if you have a lot of trees for something like that, your satellite is not going to work. And sometimes if you're remote, you're going to put up your antenna, your regular antenna that you just kind of roll up in the RV. Yeah. And that may not pick up much of anything. So for those of you, and occasionally we want to watch some TV, like what's that show that you like to watch? Bachelor, Bachelorette? Shh, don't give that away. <laughs> oh. I don't watch that show. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> but you can stream some of that uh, if you have good internet. Yeah. And if you don't, uh, you know, yeah, well, sometimes I'll watch it on ABC.com or Hulu. I like to watch it on Hulu. We have that. We have Netflix. So, right. Yeah. We don't really miss having TV, but that's Amazon us personally. Video. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So if you're a big tv movie person or like like to watch a lot of sports you definitely don't know where what you're going to get when you go to a particular area so if that may be something you'll want to keep in mind so is there anything else that you miss uh climate control in the rv you know, I think that uh, it's hard to keep it consistent. It does have slides, so it's not airtight as a house would be. Right. So there's a lot of times, like when we're down in Florida, like we are now, and hot days, if we're not under a tree and have some shade, the air conditioning struggles to keep up. It, yeah. it does for the most part, but it struggles and it's loud. So we have to listen to that all day while we're trying to work. In full sun uh, and you get like mid 80s or hotter, right, both air conditioning units have a hard time keeping up. And it also affects the refrigerator. Yes. RVs in general don't have great insulation. Now I say that in general, some nicer, maybe class A's uh, have better insulation, more built like a regular house, but they're just not very efficient. So if you cool it off and the AC goes off, it gets hot again really, really quickly. Really fast, yes. And same thing if it's colder temperatures in the winter time and you've got the furnace on. The walls, if you're by a wall, you're still cold, even though it might be warmer in yeah. parts of the RV. Yeah. So it doesn't feel like a house. Right. That way. When we're traveling, the RV can get close to 90 degrees it gets hot in inside there. because you can't run your AC while you're going down the road. Right. And then at night, unless you want to keep it warmer, we like to let it get down into the like mid 60s, yep. sometimes upper 60s. Yeah. So what's the last thing on our list? today um let's talk about storage <laughs> yeah storage is a big one i feel like we need to constantly be doing a purge constantly constantly because yeah finding stuff in such a small space because things aren't organized as well and easily as you would in a sticks and bricks right the story we have a lot of storage but it's small mm -hmm. they're not big compartments so it's not efficient Right, and I know that's going to vary a lot uh, by the type of RV. We toured some Class A's with huge storage yeah. underneath, yeah. which is one of our favorite features nice. of a Class A. Yes. <laughs> and we don't have that. And plus, like when you add things, like you have to be very mindful of buying clothing. Oh, yeah. And how that's going to fit, even right. though we have a pretty good sized uh, closet we do. for and an it, RV. And if you haven't seen it, check out our RV tour. And that, again, the video for that will be down below in the description. But sometimes, you know, when we got to do another clothing purge is when it's like, you can't cr cram yeah. the next piece of clothing in I know. there. Oh, and the drawers are small too, so right. you can't really. Uh, yeah, so storage. Yeah, it's a thing. Even for like kitchen appliances, you know. Right. So. Have you ever had a walk in closet? Yes. Right, and I have too. Yeah. And With a window. I mean, it was that big. <laughs> no, no, I didn't have that. Oh, and I had it custom done. It was just, it was heaven. Yeah. But yeah, when you get used to a walk in closet with a lot of space like that and 
we toured some RVs that I think the closet was like really that. small, like with five mean, shirts. <laughs> right. Yeah, I don't know how people do it like that, but they do. We really don't need as much as we have, actually. We could probably downsize a lot more. You could just give me more of your closet. <laughs> That's cute. He's that, adorable. That would work. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> I love you. I love you. <laughs> Give me your closet space. No. <laughs> no. Don't you, don't you love me? No. Yes, <laughs> but no closet space. And if you would like to see our RV tour and all of our RV tours, you can click this link right up here. And we're not done with RV tours, so stay tuned. Something was cool. More. But ants. Awesome. Or maybe I'm just feeling bugs oh, all over. Oh yeah, me. there's there's bugs in the grass. Yeah. Actually, with the wind, it feels really like hot sticky. and sticky. I know. Out. Is that enough about privacy? <laughs> <laughs> when you go into the bathroom, <laughs> people can hear you. Maybe stuff a towel. <laughs> Sound <laughs> travels. A, a big you can hear it through the wall in the kitchen. <laughs> We can keep yeah. up very closely. We can keep tabs on everybody's bowel habits. <laughs> the, the walls are thin in the RV. <laughs> we can have him walk in the back. Yeah, that sounds cool. good. Okay. Oh, wow. Look at that. Birds. <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> so we just got here and Shree's taken off. The RV's not even set up yet. <laughs> she can't wait to get to the beach. Go beach tribe! Go beach tribe! <laughs> Okay. RV shuffle. The RV shuffle. The, the RV, RV shuffle. shuffle. Oh, am I doing this right? Uh. Oh. <laughs> no. Let, just let me do it. Okay. Okay. Excuse me, he said. I need a piece of bread. But you need to sing it. <laughs>